Hi, welcome back to the channel. Let's be noobs together. My name's Ash, I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast, and on this video, we're gonna be going over Noobs CTF, a great CTF or capture the flag for fellow noobs like myself that's just wrapped up. For note, timestamps, or anything else, see the description. Otherwise, let's get into it. For this sanity check, there is indeed a flag on the Noobs CTF about page, but it was actually under the inspect or the view source, and it was a hidden comment in there. Great, so with the sanity check out of the way, it was on to the first challenge called Amazing Song Lyrics. And I didn't realize at the time, but the hint was in the acronym ASL. So the challenge was this PNG, which was just the flag written out in ASL or American Sign Language. So over to the trusty notepad. After a little bit, it started to become quite clear, but I still made a mistake. I misinterpreted the L's for one after a little bit of trial and error and then swapped out the ones with D's not L's and I've also misspelt the word language. After slowly going back over the ASL signs, I found my mistake and I finally got my first challenge. Awesome. So then it was over to Google Form number one. Uh, actually, the first time I've seen Google Form used in a CTF environment. So after just putting in a bunch of random things into the Google Form, reading over the notes, uh, yeah, I could, could really get anything from it. So I tried researching it and looking up other things, but didn't really get anything. I even tried to go through the Google Docs like documentation to see if there was anything in there, but nothing that really helped me. I started to think that maybe there was a certain regular expression or some sort of input validation that I could get around. This is where I sort of went, ah, this is probably too far down a rabbit hole. Like it shouldn't be this complicated. So I finally hit control U on the keyboard to view source. Then I searched noobs and there it was. The flag was just hidden in the inspect. So I definitely overcomplicated that one. Great. So with a couple of challenges under the belt now, I'm feeling a little bit more confident and we've gone over to my chemical romance. So this challenge has something to do with chemistry, a random string of numbers and breaking these numbers up. So notepad has become quite a good tool. Uh, the first thing I do is split up the numbers as the instructions say. Then I remember that chemistry was a big thing and tables and numbers are a thing, the periodic table. And then I started noticing that the numbers actually line up to the, the letters on the periodic table and we can start to actually spell out something. Um, I didn't see 57, but I eventually realized before I sort of could see what the word is, I went over to ChatGBT to see if there's any simple words that might be able to be like shown here that I'm just not seeing. Nothing's really making sense. I put them on the board and I still can't quite make sense of it, but I think, hey, okay, let's just give this a go and see if this flag makes sense. After a little bit more trial and error, I go back over the numbers, take a bit more time, and that's where I see that I actually stuffed up and I finally see the word aeroplane. And that was finally the flag. Awesome, so that was the first category of miscellaneous. So let's go over to a reverse engineering challenge. So we're greeted with this chal file. Uh, there's no extension, it's just blank. So the first thing is to run file against it to actually see what it is. And it looks like it's already compiled some 64-bit executable. So then the next thing is to run strings against it and just have a look through the junk and there it is. Next up, it's over to my pin. This is a jar file and this is where ChatGPT comes in clutch and is just super easy to quickly find out information. Don't know what a jar is. Didn't even realize that I can just use unzip to see what's inside of it. So now that it's unzipped, I can see all the contents that there is some sort of application that we can interact with. That's when GPT helps out and we can just run java-jar and then the jar file to start interacting with it. Great, so we have our application to guess the pin. So GPT put me onto Java Snoop, a program that's supposed to be able to give me more information about this Java program that I'm trying to reverse engineer. So even though I feel like I have gotten a bit further with this Java Snoop and trying to see more things about this pin app, I just get nowhere. So I switch over to forensics. So the first challenge in the forensics category is crack and crack, which just has a simple zip folder as the challenge. So after downloading it, it needs a password. 
hence the cracked name. So we need to crack the password. So after just completely forgetting how to do this and looking it up, well, there's a zip to John. I've used this before. Why can't my brain remember these things? We pass through the zip folder and we get a hash based on that. And then we can go and try and crack that with John. There we go. After we specify the word list, we have got the first password. And that's when I realized that we need a second password because we are given a PDF. So I haven't actually had to crack a PDF before. Turns out just like there is a zip to John, there is is PDF to John. So it's the exact same process as using the zip folder. Uh, this time we're just using PDF instead. So with the same word list, we get the second password, which we can type in and we finally get our flag. And that's when I realized crack and crack. Oh, there was two things to crack. Oh yes. So next up we have in the forensics category Avengers. So if you're a fan of the Marvel universe, the space stone was introduced all the way back in the first Avengers film. Wait, actually no, wasn't it in the first Captain America that we saw the Tesseract? Is that the first time that we saw it? The space Stone. Yes, housed in the Tesseract. So the file that we are forensically analyzing is an AVI, which is something that you might have come across before an audio video interleave. It's not as commonly used. All right, so the file is a series of eight bits, binary zeros and ones just in a video. Okay, we need to take all of the zeros and ones in their format and then pipe them through Cyberchef or something. I started using a power toys application which just reads what text is on the screen that started like I started realizing that this is going to take quite a lot of time even though that the clip only goes for like two minutes still doing this um, one at a time one at a time I was like Oh, okay, this is kind of getting annoying. There's got to be a better way. So back to GPT. That's when I saw FFmpeg, which is something that I have seen around and not really had to use. And after a second ask of how I use FFmpeg, I see a familiar word, Tesseract. And that sort of brings us full circle and points me in the right direction of what I'm actually supposed to use to solve this challenge. So let's install FFmpeg, get that up and running. And it does take me a little bit of time to actually get this to work. After a lot of reading and looking around at different articles, I end up coming back to GPT and asking more succinctly and directly what I need help with. And this is when I learn about some other command line tools like Tesseract dash OCR, which I actually thought GPT was like totally hallucinating and like they just made this up, but no. Uh, it turns out that this is a very real thing and this is actually exactly what I need to solve this problem. So after installing the Tesseract command line tool, now I actually have everything that I need. So I still go ahead and try and read the man pages to get my head around what I'm actually doing with each of the flags that I'm using. For the most part, it was really plug and play there it is. There are all the frames in JPEGs from the AVI file. They're all separated. Um, every frame. Crazy. So then Tesseract comes in clutch where it takes that frame and outputs the text that it finds in it. I just need to be able to do this in a repeated fashion for every single JPEG. And I just did a simple one liner using Bash just in a for loop. So with some very minor tweaks just to get it pointing at the right files. That's all I had to do. Tesseract just worked. And there I have all of the text files. So there is a JPEG from a video over into a text file with the text in each file. It, honestly, this one blew my mind. So the last thing is just to simply cat out all of the binary, like all of the text files, and just to output that all into a single text file. And I can just copy all of that and slap it into Cyberchef now. And there is our extremely long flag that we've got. So next up, we are over to crazy CSV, QR. Uh, there's a bit of a hint there. So there's this secret.csv that we need to download for this one. And it has a series of coordinate looking things in this CSV. After pleading with GPT,
GPT to do this challenge for me. I, I realized that I need to actually write my own Python program to solve this. And this is where it became a little bit more confusing for me because I just wasn't sure exactly what library I needed to read the file. And I'm still confused with what I actually need to get from the file. So that's when I remember that the instructions or the title have a QR in it. And I clue on that this needs to generate a QR code that we could scan and see the contents. It turns out that there is a library, a QR code Python library. I do my best to try and get this thing to work. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. <laughs> So after a lot of errors and trying to make this work, I end up just giving up. And this brings me on to day two and there were more challenges released. So we've gone back to miscellaneous and we have a Google form too. So because I have tackled Google form one, I'm feeling fairly confident that there is something to do with viewing the source again. So I'm hoping that I can find it. But of course, we still need to go through the obligatory, chuck stuff in form, see what worky, surely something works before we go over to the view source and I try and look up anything that I can find. There was some hints about response and preview. Yeah, nah. <laughs> but I'm fairly confident that there's definitely something in here and nothing is sticking out. Since that the description rather has previous in it, I think, hey, maybe they put the Google form on a way back machine. Yeah, nah. I don't think Google Forms get indexed like that. That, that was just a bit of wishful thinking there. But hey, you, you got to try these things. Do you want flag? Yes. No. <laughs> Sometimes you just, you get so stuck, you just try anything. But no, I couldn't find it. So let's go on to a different category. So we're going over to Club Noob and we're greeted with this. You are not a member. Try again. I see that there's a secret phrase equals. So some sort of variable that happens when that button is clicked. Here, actually, I have a lot of information that I just totally look over. That doesn't stop me from going through the source again and again and seeing what there is. Go over to Burp Suite to see if there's something in the HTTP headers, something that I can mess around with or inspect further. And there's just really not that much. I actually have all the information that I need here. I'm just not seeing it yet. Can you spot what the secret phrase is? Because it's popping out. So this is when I come back to that secret phrase. It has to have something to do with that. And I still can't see it. That's when I finally actually read what's in front of me the whole time. Radical. It's literally highlighted. So I changed that to radical and finally I'm on the list. So the next challenge was robots. The instructions or the clue is where the robots at. And if you've dealt with web servers or websites, you'll know that they are in robots.com. TXT. So that was as easy as I thought it would be. Great. So we're over to secret group. We're given a URL with a port number. To get the flag, you must be in the secret group. So all we have here is not an agent of the noobs admin secure browser. So agent makes me think user agent. So I go into the Firefox settings to change the user agent. This doesn't work for whatever reason. I try a bunch of times with no luck. I really thought that that would at least give me some sort of new information. So it's back over to Burp Suite and I'm gonna change the HTTP headers because in here we have the user agent and we can add this to the repeater and change what we request. So I switch over the user agent to exactly what it says on the response and I get a different response. Great, so now I finally see what I actually need to do is I need to change the HTTP headers to whatever value the new response gives me. It's a case of just following the ball here. So there's an accept flag. So we change the accept flag from the default value over to this new value. There's a connection flag. There's a referred by flag. And this is where I ran into an issue. The referrer was giving me different responses. So I'm not sure if the CTF was bugging out that was causing the issues, but I just wouldn't get a response. Eventually, I actually do get a response just one 
time and I couldn't get it again. So I literally just kept trying the same thing, which is the definition of insanity. I'm not insane because it eventually did work again. So that makes me believe that there was something on the other end, something that I couldn't see. And after probably like the 50th attempt, I finally got the flag back, even though I had tried the same thing. But this time, it eventually just worked. I think maybe their systems were getting overwhelmed. That challenge really annoyed me. <laughs> so next up, we have conditions. So we're greeted with a username field on our site. I thought whatever I type in, it just says your username is too short. So let's go over to Burp Suite so we can easily repeat requests. And let's just get a sort of understanding of how this works. Eventually, there are too many characters and we do get a response where the username is too long. Silly me though, they actually give us some source code. So now we actually can see some source code, we can kind of get an idea of what's going on. So it turns out that if the username is greater than or equal to 40, it's too long. If it's less than or equal to 50, it's too short. Yeah, that, that might have made instant sense for you, but that like confused me for so long. I legit had to type out the five times tables, 50 to 60, so I could visually see what what this meant. Bro, my brain is so slow sometimes. It says here, if those conditions aren't met, it will return the flag. So we need to exploit this somehow. The only thing that stood out is the less than or equal to 50 has this upper method appended to it. Why? Why would you need to check or convert rather the input to upper, like a capitalized version of what's input? Like that doesn't make any sense why that's actually there. So it turns out that there is some funny vulnerability thing, but you can actually bypass this using some other like characters. So I thought, all right, let's just try a bunch of these funny things. And I got the flag. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. I solved it. I don't fully understand exactly what I was taking advantage of. I'm kind of happy to take a break from web and I've gone over to OSINT and we're on to Mission Moon. So we're trying to find the name of a lander and a rover with the longitude and latitude values of where this thing lands. So we have an image. So first we check if there's any EXIF data or metadata. Uh, there's nothing in the image itself. I remember that this is is OSINT. So we're not actually trying to forensically analyze this image. We're trying to find out stuff on the interwebs. After a quick tiny eye search or reverse image search, I find the name of this spacecraft, which is from India, the Vikram spacecraft. So great. Now I have the spacecraft that I'm actually looking more into. We can go a bit further in that. So I search the website with the name. So there we have the longitude and latitude for the spacecraft in the format to the single decimal. So that's great. So we've got some part of the flag. We don't have all of it, but we're pretty close. So over to trusty notepad. And it's a case of just typing it out and seeing if we get everything to give it a shot. So I actually don't have the full flag yet. So I actually need to properly read the article because the lander and the rover do have two different names. The rover is named Paragyan, while the lander is called Vikram. Then finding the right flag format that they actually want. Finally, after trial and error, we get the Vikram full flag there. Great, so our first OSINT challenge is done and we're over to DAM. We have to download a PNG and here we are, a DAM. So since the last method of reverse image search worked well, let's go ahead and do that another time. Great, so we have a CNN article of Ukraine and the name of the DAM. So it's straight over to Google Maps to look at exactly where that DAM is and to confirm that we have the correct name. But I remembered that the flag is actually of the city name. Yeah, so that's all we needed. That was quite easy. So next up, we went over to the Pwn category and we've tried flag shop. So we have a netcat to use, so we can go check that out. And it actually looks like a familiar challenge that I've seen somewhere else. I can't remember if it was a try hack me or what, but I have come across this. This is using, I think an integer overflow. I just know if you put in a bunch of numbers, it is 
too much for it to actually like understand and compute and we get the flag. So I can do it, but that does not mean I understand it. And yeah, that sort of leads me to the end of the noob CTF. So that is a total of 14 out of however many challenges there were. Thankful to the noob CTF team, they put on a great challenge. So sending love their way. If you haven't checked out their CTF before, join the Discord. I'm super proud of myself for completing all the challenges that I did. So that does it for this video. Thanks so much for watching up until the end. On the screen, you're gonna see a recommendation for my home lab, episode two, setting up a Docker and getting my first device up and running. Check it out and I will catch you in the next one. All right, see you later.